So, hello everyone and welcome. If you're here, you probably come from Twitter or Telegram, which I appreciate and which I am thankful for. Uh, really, the whole support that was given to me, the vibes of the community, the knowledge that was shared, it's just crazy and it's just so good. And I thank everyone for the um, support. If not, then allow me to introduce myself shortly, avoiding personal stuff, because, like, who cares? So I'm Chu, um, the guy who started can counting candles on Twitter and just made the Telegram channel for it. Um, I was inspired by Denizen um, at the Inner Circle Morpheus on Twitter. Shout out to him as I owe him this stuff. And then the whole wave of candle counting believers, candle counting haters and all that mess was born. Yeah, that that's basically... Me and us too, right? So, I'm an ICT trader, and if you're not, then I suggest you avoid going deeper into this and avoid just looking at this and knowing this, right? Because this is stuff that I owe to ICT also, and it's just nothing, it's just dust without ICT. It's not gonna work. Right, because candle counting does not work alone by itself. You, it is an additional confluence to your trading. It, if you do not have your model, right? If you do not know ICT, his concepts, PD arrays, how time works, then just avoid looking at this. Right, that is my personal suggestion. Little disclaimer: I am not suggesting you to live trade with this. This is for pure research purposes. So, I've been trading since two years, I'm 19 years old and I'm looking forward to getting funded soon with candle counting as confluence in my trading. My journey started with retail concepts, yet here I am now, <laughs> all right, explaining my take on candle counting and why I think it works in the markets. I mean, it's been a long and tough journey. Um, so anyways, like back to us, I'll keep it short because there is a lot of stuff to talk about. So first of all, I wanted to thank ICT. Um, Michael, I know you uh, roam on YouTube sometimes and maybe you're here watching this. I wanted to seize the opportunity to just thank you, right? Thank you for what you do and what you did. So second point, you will only be able to understand this with ICT small money concepts. I already told this, I will repeat this. This works based off ICT concepts. ICT concepts is how the market works and how the market it delivers. Without that, you won't understand candle counting. It's just pure dust. It's just dust. ICT is how the market delivers and candle counting is one of the confluence and is one of the footprints of the algorithm. And this leads us to the question, what is candle counting? In my opinion, although I know Michael plainly stated that Candle counting has no bearing on his stuff. I mean, it works. It just, for me, from my personal experience, it just works. I blend it with ICT. Sometimes I just trade ICT without candle counting, but it just works. I mean, and it happens every time. It's fractal and it's just never ending. I see candle counting as algorithmic footprints being left during price delivery and price flow, right? It's algorithmic footprints, just like PD arrays, just like everything, it is um, signatures, price signatures that are fractal and that happen every time. So price is, we know that price is delivered by the algorithm and that delivers price in fact, and that aligns, right? And I believe that there are certain um, numbering sequences that um, push price delivery to Right. And with candle counting, what we are trying to do is getting in sync with these number sequences that um, have an influence over price delivery and identifying them and just executing of them, right, based off ICT concepts, um, just like rebalancing, right. It's just simple as it sounds. And you know, here's the key. The key, it's not just about the candles, right? It's about time 
and it's about combining the power of candles, right? The power of the bodies of the candles, the wicks of the candles, PD arrays, just blending all this stuff to get crazy executions, crazy executions. It's just crazy. But do you need this? No, you don't. Is this a get rich quick scheme? No, it's not. It's not. Trading isn't easy. It's not supposed to be easy. If it was easy, then it would even I exist, right? It's not supposed to be easy. But candle counting is just confluence to your position. Right? It's seeing things before they even happen. It's knowing when price will take off and when price will just retrace and just knowing in how much time a, PD, a certain PD array is, um, is likely to be reached for, when price will likely leave the PD array, when will it just consolidate in the PD array, let's say a breaker area, all right? And you with candle counting, you can know I did this on the lower time frame. I will explain it in another video because um, this will be uh, two videos coming out. This one, an introduction plus um, long term analysis, and the next one will be just purely short term analysis. I will break down my actual trades. And what you can do is just know how much uh, price will consolidate inside a certain area. Let's say a breaker area, breaker plus uh, fair value gap area price consolidates a bit, we can know when it will reach that, when it will leave, right? And it just works, it works for me, and I saw that it works for others too, right? It, you just need to put the work in order to be able to see it. It's also pretty damn cool, right? It's, it's very cool. But remember, I will never stop saying this, you do not need this in your trading. So before we start, I am not a mentor, I am not ICT, I will never be ICT. And for the love of God, do not hurt yourself, do not hurt your trading with this deep rabbit hole. All right? I tried my best to make the video as explanatory as possible, I tried my best, all right? and I just hope you can enjoy it, hope you can take notes, hope you can blend this with your trading and just make a lot of money because that is the point of trading making money right it's not about being cool it's not about anything else that like, fuck there everything it's just about making money right achieving freedom financial freedom time freedom uh, whatever it's just this right so we can start thank you everyone talk to you soon so first of all we will start by breaking down the euro dollar chart we will start from the three months go back down to the monthly check the weekly and i will not deal with the daily since we do not have as much time uh, to do so enough time to do so so i already highlighted um, some areas these we will call areas of interest as you can see these are key um, swing points in the market all right and referring to these, you can keep your chart open below and just mark this up. Just pause the video so you can better follow me as I'm talking and as I'm explaining what we will be doing. So we will, we have key swing points highlighted, all right? And now we will determine and count three months candles and see how the um, algorithm left its footprint in this too and how it delivered based off candle counting sequences remember that the numbers that we focus on uh, when we candle count are 7 13 21 and 4 all right 4 is a rebalancing um, number we will see it in a second all right we have this one up here and now we can start breaking it down so we can start from this point here this one as we can see there's a gap here all right so we can count from this point here so it's we don't count distortion candles what are distortion candles the distortion candles are just as this one here all right what are distorted candles distorted candles do not break the high nor the low of the previous candle 
It's just basically inside candles. Inside candles we do not count as they are time distorted candles. All right, so we skip this one. We start from this swing low. So it's one, we skip this, two, three, and four. So this is our four on M3 because we will break it down. So it's our four on M3. All right, cool. <coughs> then, sorry. Then, um, mm -mm -mm, from this one, we can count until, let's say, this one. Because this one happened right after. We can we'll count from this one to this one. So, from this one, right? One, two, three. Um, does this one break it? Uh, yeah, four, five, six, seven. Seven on M3 on top. All right. Um, then we can count from, we can try to count from this one to this one, but I'm not sure it will work. But one, because we already used this one for the um, rebalancing sequence, right? Four, but let's see. One, two, three, four. See, it's four and five. So this one is four also, right? This is one big confluence. Why? Because we have the rebalancing sequence that determines that four rebalances and five leaves. Right, so this is another one, another four, four on M3. Cool. Then, um, what we can do is check uh, this one here. Let's do it from here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's extend it here. Make it fair. All right, seven on M3. We can add confluence to this and see the overlapping sequence. Let's say if we come from here, I believe it's will be 13. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. All right. So it's also um, 13 on um, M3. Uh, yep. Then we can check this one out. So let's say this is four. So we have five, six, seven. This one becomes seven on M3. Let's make it on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Then let's see, let's see. We can start counting from this. Let's see, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. This becomes a 13, but we will not highlight this one since it's not a key swing. And thus it has um, little confluence over over it. Then what we can determine, we still have this one, but let's say I'm not counting this one. Same. It has just little meaning on it. Then we need to check out this one. We have also this one, which is this way. We can start counting for this one since here. So it's one inside candle, two, three, inside, four, five, six, seven. Seven on M3. All right. Then we can also um, go for this one. So let's say one, two, three, inside, four. So this one becomes, it becomes four on M3. Rebalancing. Let's see, rebalance is what? Oh, we have what's this one here, all right? And five, let's see five, what those five leaves? Four rebalances, five leaves, and leaves, all right? Then, um, what we have here? We have also this one. This one we can count from, let's say here, maybe. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We have this one as 13, which is a swing point. All right. And we have basically nothing here. Um, so we can just chop it out, um, basically. Then what? Then this, we probably do not have anything here. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 6. This one becomes seven, but yeah, I would just leave it there. Um, but just know that 
Although we do not have the confluence from the M3, we might have confluence on lower time frames. So this will become certainly a key swing point based off the M1 counting uh, process. All right. One thing I didn't tell, why did I pick the 3M? Because um, personally, I use the three months chart and also for executions, I look at the three minute chart very much. I found that these sequences, candle counting sequences on time frames, time frames that involve the three are very powerful and very meaningful and respect uh, much in a much stronger way the um, footprints that it leaves. Right? So we have this, okay? Um, we can probably break it out even further and just go for other sequences and all that stuff, but we don't have that much time. So we can um, go, we can determine this one here, which is probably seven, right? One, two, three, four, six, yeah. This one becomes seven on M3. All right, now we can go um, for the M1 chart, All right? So we can go this, not the daily, thank you, the monthly. So, monthly chart in hand, we see this, right? It's a much clearer picture, right? So, let's say that we will start from this, right? It's a lot of months, but we can count from here, right? Wait, let's count this here. So, it's one inside, two inside, three, four, <coughs> five inside, so it's five here, seven six, seven, inside, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we had a lot of confluence here, all right. <clears throat> um, this we can refer to as the, as an area of 13, so 13 on M1 area, all right, because it's not perfectly in sync with it. So this one has little confluence over it, so let me just, no, fuck, let me just, Right, little confluence. This one we can basically skip. It has less meaning. So this one will become also 7 on M1, probably, because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 down here. So this one becomes 7 on M1. Big confluence area, right? Big, big, big confluence area. Then what we have, this area will probably become 7 to, so it's 1, Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you have a a seven on M one area. Area. Let's say let's write area. So just broader. <clears throat> then we can check this one out. So from here, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. All right, this one was was off, so we can count from this one. As you can see, it's not that accurate. Sometimes it just um, it's not that the algorithm is delivering badly. It's just that um, we as traders and we as counters are off sync. All right, so it's it's not an algorithm fault. The algorithm will always deliver and always leave its footprint. It's us that may not understand it sometimes. So we can come from this one, swing point two, which is seven on M1. This is a seven on M1 area, but we saw that this is a s is the precise seven on M1. So from this one here, one inside, two, three inside, four, five, six, seven. All right, much better, much, much better. Another one, my messages, seven on M1, All right? Cool. Then this one, will also become probably a four, let's say from here, one, two, three, four, four on one. Here we can probably count um, and find a, a 21 uh, on this one, most likely. It's from here, let's say, let's take this. This one doesn't count distortion candles. 17, but from here, yeah, never mind, never mind, never mind, all right, 
Then, mm -mm -mm, this will become Mach 21 for sure if it comes from here. So just be a bit broad, right? I will not count them because there are many. 35, probably through involving all the other, all the distortion candles inside of it, we will get 21, um, around 21, or from here. So I just say that is this, yeah, it's 21 on M1. So you have so much confluence in this one. Uh, we counted from, to find this 21, we counted from this one, it's doing glow, right? Cool. Then we can go from, we can go to this one here. This is probably a 7, right? Why? Because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this one becomes 7 on M1. Alright. Then we have what? This one will become probably a 13, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13. So this one, you, you can see clearly how these sequences overlap in key swing points, right? It's just not random. Anything is, nothing is random in the markets and everything is a signature of the algorithm itself, okay? So then, since this is 13, we can assume that this will be 20, 21, most likely. We can count 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, yeah, I mean 13 from here, so it's 21. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 here, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, inside 20, inside 21. I probably skipped uh, inside candle while I was counting, so it's this one here, 21. I, have, I'm, uh, so I apologize if I'm counting quickly, but... I do not want to make this video so long that it just can't be watched nor followed. And then we have this area, which is probably a uh, 7 area. So it's 1 inside, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 inside, 7. Uh, this one becomes a 7 area from here to here. See, it's not about being perfectly in sync, it's about just knowing the environment and the context of it. Cool. Alright. This one is probably just off, but it's it's fine. Cool. Now we can we have this framework. Right? This is the framework and you can see clearly how these are being respected. Alright? We can see this seven. Then does what? Retraces. Alright. Then he the sequence of the rebalancing overlaps. So it's four and five will leave we know that it will leave and we know that it will work since we have also 7 on M1 here. So this is a position. This is a cool position, right? I'm not a positional trader. I do not do long-term trading. I do not hold, but this for swing traders could work very fine. We have a gap and we know that we can basically predict the top, right? When will the top happen? We know that the top will happen in this month. So we look for executions in this month or in this month. This is the sell-off month, right? We have power of three in play here. Open, high, low, close, right? It's cool. So this one was a position. Here, we know that it will go down until what? Until another key swing point is formed at a certain sequence number, All right? So we have seven on M3 coupled with seven on M1 which is a big confluence that this will be a key swing point, all right? Not necessarily marking a reversal, but marking a change in state of delivery, a change in delivery, all right? Then what we have here, we know that it will expand another once until, sorry, apologies, until another key swing point is formed at a certain sequence number. And we have this, all right, this, uh, seven, on M3 coupled with a 4 on M1. What are what are we exactly rebalancing? We have an order block here. Since it's paired with this small little gap, this is a valid order block, and this is basically the mitigation of it. And we can also we know that this acts as a resistance area, right? Then what we have, 
another one this one is little confluence so i would not be so sure about this ideally um i would not look at this All right so we can remove it without an issue then we have what we have this area which is prior to this cell off which has big big fat confluence on it we have a 13 on m3 7 on m3 and 21 on m1 All right this is perfect this is perfect price signature then we have this 7 on m3 m1 4 and 3, 3 on, 13 on M1, and etc. etc. You see how these sequences basically overlap as price delivers. These are um, algorithm footprints, right? That is, I feel like it has these sequences that um, underlie the algorithm and really mark the algorithmic um, delivery, right? And you can see how these are paired with ICT concepts. Right. Why do I think I uh, would I just randomly just long here because I see seven on MT, seven on M1? No, I wouldn't. But I see that these ones are being swept. Alright. And I would probably target this area here, this small gap here. Alright, if I was a positional trader. Cool. Then do I randomly short here? No. I don't. I would probably short around here, this area here, if I was a positional trader. Alright. And because, why the order flow is telling me that this is bearish and I'm bearish until this high is broken. If this high is broken, I take the loss and I might just change um, change bias. Then would I randomly just short here? No, I wouldn't. All right, I have this one, this range here, which is pretty balanced. All right, you can see that there is, there is both sides delivery here. All right, we have this one, which is an important area. All right, you can see how basically the bodies, this is ICT by the way, um, the bodies do not go further than this, it just wicks. All right, but we focus on bodies mostly. Then we have this one here, etc. etc. So you do not execute based of it, based just of candle counting, right? You need confluence, you need. Um, other factors to come in play and you execute off those factors and just candle counting is just another additional confluence to your trading process right we can even switch to the weekly we'll probably see the same stuff i mean it's a bit a bit longer to do so we can just mm, yeah it's a bit longer to do you can do it as a as kind of homework to just to see it yourself you know you have your chart euro dollar you have your markups done on three months and monthly and you can just go to the weekly and you can also just determine it on the daily too all right so you just divide days right. it will be a longer process so i don't suggest counting from this you want to keep it simple basically you don't it is simple indeed but you want to keep it simple you do not want ideally to have at this point here have like overlapping sequences like have a 400 that comes here and etc etc no it's not ideal you don't want that you want to keep it simple you just can measure it from here oh sorry you can measure it from here you can measure it from here here and here too it just here too also why not you want to keep it as simple as possible but you see that it works right it works and right now after this analysis we will go f through on um, my actual positions uh, which i executed you saw it you have the metatrader um proof and also some trading view proof once when i execute it on trading view you will see that it works and it's fractal right just like any other thing it's fractal and you can basically just take this micro picture and see the same price delivery on the m1 right it just it and this makes it just wonderful and it's a very strong price signature in my opinion all right and it's it's a deep rabbit hole to the dig ideally you do not want to do this unless you are cool with your trading unless you know what you're doing and you just have your strategy already planned and already done that's the ideal scenario <coughs> sorry that's the ideal scenario right 
because you can just trade off this and this is deeper than it seems the delivery is simple but it's deeper than it seems and you just don't want to get caught in this as you can really ruin your trading process and perhaps your future i don't know and i don't want that so i'm not suggest suggesting doing this right i'm not suggesting li live trading with this it's just purely um studying purposes behind this so after this um higher time frame breakdown we can go to the lower time frames i will not show every my execution because it i repeat the video will become too long but i will go through um lower time frame executions too or just make it another video i don't know so thank you everyone again for the support thank you everyone for the attention i hope it was interesting enough um probably a little bit boring but I could not find a way to make it um, funnier than it is. Um, I mean, it's just me explaining the the chart. So yeah, and little homework you have is just go deeper with the weekly chart. I gave you the framework. I gave you the swings. I gave you the explanation on how to do it. So just turn on the weekly, turn on the daily maybe, and just get to work. Um, as you wait for the lower time frame. Um, video as I know that most likely most traders are short-term traders so that one will likely be um, better for you but just know that this is fractal all right this thing that you see in front of you this chart here is fractal all right you can see the same concepts same ideas same principles happening on the lower time frame it's just way, way harder to determine, right? Here you have three months candles, monthly candles, weekly candles, daily candles. There you have, um, as for uh, me, you have one minute candles that print every 60 seconds. So it's just about quick decision making and just seeing it um, live repeatedly and... I mean, it just takes training, it just takes the effort, the work, and if you put it in, I promise you, um, big things. It might also not work for you, it's fine, I mean, it just, trading is also something personal, right? There is different traders with different styles, with different ideas, but yeah, so, um, you can share this video around, um, I would not mind, I mean, I would love it. <laughs> And just, yeah, thank you everyone and talk to you next time with the next video and just see you. Good luck, good trading.